Let's try that again. Hi, I'm Jason, and for some reason I make music as Sycamore Willow. Today, we're gonna play around with these. They're just little cassette recorders. All right, so let's get into it. Um, oh, by the way, you might be able to hear some voices in the background. I live in a small house. Anyway, um, so what I'm gonna talk about today is a little bit of basic information, my thoughts about playing with these little inexpensive tape recorders. Well, they may not be inexpensive forever, and I'll, I'll say a few things about that too. Um, and then I'll just walk you through some of the steps I used to make the track I put up um, uh, this past week called Mirror Trees, and I'll put a link to it in the video uh, right about now. Right about now. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so first a couple things, uh, you know, why play with these tape players at all? What's what's the point? Uh, why is this fun um, for me? Well, so part of the thing for me is like, I like scrounging, right? I love going to thrift stores and used record stores and digging through things and finding gems. There's just pleasure in that for me. And so this is sort of an extension of that, right? Some of these things I find at like flea markets and, and uh, you know, estate sales, things like that, pick them up pretty cheap. Um, part of the reason I say this is like, um, I don't want people to go out and buy these specific players that I'm going to show in this video today and spend a lot of money on them. I don't spend a lot of money on these. And um, uh, that's because, you know, that you, sometimes you get them, you can't test them and they don't work real well. Um, or they only briefly work well and you know is it worth busting this open and replacing the belts maybe if you have the time and the inclination right if that's something that brings you pleasure do that I actually don't enjoy fixing these things up very much I find it frustrating and I'd rather spend more of my time uh, making music um, so anyway but here's the thing I, I, I kind of want to give you a picture of like uh, how ridiculous I can be about these things. I, I'm not going to show you everyone because uh, that would, wouldn't be a good use of your time or mine. But um, I sometimes buy these things for silly reasons. Um, and that's part of the sort of the, like I said, the treasure hunting thing. So here's one that I bought for uh, an irrational reason. It's uh, got a simulated leather cover on it. I mean, don't you just want it? And this cover comes off. And uh, it's huge. It's the size of two of these. And it's got this sweet thing where the microphone moves in and out. I mean, how cool is that? Um, it does have um, a few features that uh, are desirable. It's got a little bit of variable speed and uh, it's got mic in and earphone out. So those are, those are features you're gonna hear me highlight over and over again. Can you change the speed of playback? Can you go direct in? Does it have a microphone in and does it have an headphone out and does it have a speaker um this guy has a speaker too most of them do so these are my two favorite ones that i have so far for making music and yes i have uh duplicates of each of these i always think like oh man i kind of like this one i should get a backup um uh sorry i don't have a duplicate of this one i have a duplicate of this one anyway um so the sony one's pretty cool it has all the features that i like it's got this two kinds of speed controls that are really interesting. So this one, all it does is it changes the speed of the motor. This is the normal speed, which I believe is one and seven eighths inches. Is that, what is that? Like four and a half, nine centimeters? I don't know, I'm sorry. I, I should have these things. I should look these things up before making these videos. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, maybe I'll be clever and edit this in or put some text right over me actually correcting what I'm saying. So um, anyway, at normal, it's at that slower speed and then it doubles it. So if you're not used to working with tape, um, I'll just sort of explain the, the fundamental way that works. So if you record at normal speed and play back at double, it'll be, or with where it says double, it'll actually play back at a half speed, roughly. If you record here and go to normal, uh, then you get chipmunks records. It's uh, really high pitched. So what else this has is pretty fun is this um, more granular control of speed. Uh, it has a little detente in the middle there so you're not interacting with the motor that much and then you go faster or slower. So you can get really, really slow or really, really fast 
and you know as you can imagine in a device like this too it's tons of wow and flutter going on so that you know those are really cool fun things for us so we'll definitely uh play around with that and then i'll i'll show you what those things sound like uh microphone for recording just with that uh you can plug a mic in and you have an earphone out this vor feature i don't know what to do with it it's, i haven't been able to do anything useful with it it just it then essentially turns record on at a certain volume threshold um, if anybody knows a cool use of that let me know i i would love to know, but I haven't been able to think of a use for it. Um, so this little GE recorder, um, it uh, it has a lot of the same features, but the variable speed is only with a little wheel, no, none, none of that fun adjustableness. And uh, you've got a mic in here that you can set the level on from lower to high. You don't have a mic to plug in, but it does have earphones out. And like I pointed out, both of them have speakers. This one has a speaker in the front, this one on the back. Um, and uh, this one's got a sticker that I never removed completely. That's how it came. I wonder what it said. Anyway, um, cool. So those are the features, and those are the kinds of things I look for in a tape player. So if you are inspired to go find a bunch of little inexpensive tape players, um, those are some of the features you should look for, speed. Sometimes they only speed up and don't speed down, which is a little disappointing, and some of them won't record at a different speed like they'll only record at a fixed speed and the playback is adjustable sometimes it's hard to tell if you're in a shop and there's there are no batteries and and you don't have a cassette and you can't um test it but if you're like if you're really serious about this like um i'm sure some people are you'll walk around with some rechargeable double a's in your pocket and some cassettes and start testing um <clears throat> cool so let's get into a little bit of how um, how I use these in the track um, from this week, Mirror Trees. On this recorder here, I recorded a loop of um, a synth pad that I played on the OP-1, and we'll get into that in a little bit here. So let me take away the GE for a little bit, and we'll talk about how, whoops. Okay, so now I'll talk about how I use a loop in this player. And this is beginner info, you know, I'll put chapters in this video if you're like, ah, I already know how to make a tape loop. Go ahead and skip that and um, get, come back to me later, please. Here's a tape loop. It's a short length of tape in a loop. That's why it's called a tape loop. This one's, uh, oh man, I can't remember, three or five seconds. Really gotta do my research before these videos. Anyway, um, so the the tape loops i bought these from a seller on etsy here i'll i'll go ahead and um, shill for the seller that seems like a nice thing to do moonbeam tapes on etsy thank you for your nice tapes sir his uh tapes by the way come pre-recorded with weird uh synth things on them so they're kind of fun from the get-go um and they're i think he records them as four tracks so even more interesting so uh but how do you use a loop on these things? It's not uh, as easy as just popping it in. And let me explain a little bit why. One of the things you'll notice is I had um, little pieces of tape over here. That's because the tabs are knocked down on this. And if the tabs are out, you can't press record. So you'll notice I reach in here and press this little thing in the upper left-hand corner in order to press the record button. So now, hopefully, you can kind of see the heads in here. I've got it open. You can see there's a head here in the center and there's a head over here on the left. This head's job is to erase tape before you start recording on it over here because you want to kind of have a clean slate before recording it. Otherwise, you get sound on sound, which is actually pretty cool. And that's what we're going to go for is sound on sound. So the dilemma is, though, if you put a loop in here and imagine like we just go boop and put a little sound here and the loop goes around, then that sound is going to get here to the erase head and be erased before that section of tape can get new sound on it. So in between here and here, it's gonna have uh, essentially silence, a little bit of tape hiss, hooray. Um, and so you'll never record a tape loop without an empty section on it if you are in, have the erase head working. So people who um, work with cassette loops typically defeat the erase head at some point so that you can get a, a, a seamless loop. How do you defeat the erase head? Well, some people are fancy and get in there and actually um, put a switch in it and stuff like that. Like I've said before, that sounds really cool. I wish I had the time and inclination to do that. Um, uh, 
and uh, I'm sure there's a ton of videos out there to show you how to do it, but you can also just do it with a piece of aluminum foil. Uh, it's less permanent, obviously. So I have this little piece of aluminum foil that I've cut and folded to shape, and I'm gonna fit it right over the erase head. And it doesn't really damage anything, as far as I know. Well, I'm sure someone on the internet will tell me I'm wrong. All right, let's hit stop. So it kinda gotta hold it in there. Oh man, I'm making it look easy, aren't I? <laughs> All right, anyway, you gotta, gotta kinda hold it in there. And we're gonna slide the tape in. And hope it worked. Did it work? Nope. It's so easy. It's so easy. Okay, so you get the piece of foil in there. We're gonna try to make sure it doesn't get caught on the edge of the tape as we put it in there. And, oh, come on now. All right, we'll just hope and pray it works. Cool, now you're ready to make a loop. Okay, so now I'm gonna connect this to the OP-1 and uh, record a little pad loop and show you what that sounds like and, and some of the cool, fun things we can do with the speed control. So I've got the output of the OP-1 going into the mic in here. And, um, and then from the earphone out, I've got that going into my recording interface so we can monitor it. Um, cool, so I'm just gonna play this chord that um, you can't hear. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know what, it's not important. I'm gonna play this chord straight into here, so I'm gonna engage pause and record. Um, and now you'll be able to hear a little hiss from being able to monitor it. So one of the things you'll notice right away is there, there's some kind of compression circuit on this. A lot of these have these to help <clears throat> deal with speech. So you notice the attack is really slow. You get a really strange bit of a, a compression in there. We'll probably lose that in the loop because I'm just gonna hold it for a little while until it, um, we record a bunch of stuff. So let me unpause it and we'll go. Cool, so that's probably the least interesting thing you can do with a loop, but um, you know, I just started the track last week that way. You know, you just start exploring somehow, so I was like, Let's see what happens when you put a pad on it. So, um, and I'll kind of show what this sounds like once you start hooking up some effects and how fun that can sound. Okay, so here, let's have fun and play it back. So I'm gonna press the play button and we'll listen and I'll start playing with these speed controls. And then you'll notice because we did sound on sound, you can you're getting stuff that I recorded on there where you're hearing handling noise. Um, that's because of disabling the erase head. I didn't completely wipe the tape clean first. So if you're really concerned about having a really clean uh, slate to work with, you would definitely want to leave the erase head engaged and run the loop through once or twice before recording on it. But for me, part of the fun is getting some of those weird, unpredictable, um, unpredictable. Yeah, unpredictable stuff is what's fun about tape. I think that's what I was trying to say. Oh boy, here comes the fun. Uh, let's play this through some uh, reverb settings. Uh, I'm gonna take that off. Cool, he's in the night sky. So this is just uh, whatever setting I had in here last and I'll walk through some of these presets uh, that, it, that it comes with that I've tweaked maybe just a little, really not a ton. Uh, presets are useful for a complex device.
I'm, I'm all for them. And there it is dry. And then the big thing that happens when I put the reverb in is you get a nice stereo field. Got some low shimmer on it. It's kind of nice. And here's the one I used on the track. So what? Uh, the reason that got my attention is you've got this LFO that's modulating a filter with a with a uh, triangle, uh, sorry, yeah, triangle wave. And um, uh, it really adds this, you know, this movement to uh, the sound. So it's, it starts off, it's just a pad, but now it's this pad with some modulation. So that's pretty fun. Um, another little neat thing I'd like to point out about the night sky is that if you're moving knobs around with it, obviously these, these knobs might be left over from another, um, preset you're using or from what you last had it at. So one of the cool things about it though, to find out where the knob should be for the preset is you'll notice ah, that little red flash there, you see it? So I'm turning the speed knob, I turn it all the way up here and I wanna find out, well, where was it originally in the preset? Oh, right there. Super useful for kind of going back to the preset if, you're, if you've gone too far afield and you don't like what you, where you've gone. Um, Neat. So I thought that sounded great. I just used that as the base of the piece. And um, I'll move on to just a few more pieces that people asked about um, since they were curious. Okay, let's uh, get into the second loop. So uh, with this tape player, I just sang a note into this microphone and you're gonna hear a lot of handling noise. And um, honestly, on its own, it doesn't sound great, but um, kind of my approach with making this kind of music is even if something doesn't sound good, mess with it. Uh, it might end up someplace really cool and surprising. Uh, you know, oftentimes our instincts are colored by the fact that we're gonna do something the way we've always done it. So I've learned to make things that I normally wouldn't make, and sometimes those sound bad. <laughs> um, and anyway, so a little bit of advice for you. Hopefully it's helpful. So uh, I've got actually a stereo cable connected to here that the earphones on this one are stereo. So if you had a mono plug in here, it wouldn't work. Some of these other ones actually want a mono plug. Interesting. So this is off to a splitter and only one side is going into the uh, particle here. And um, cool, so I'm gonna play back the loop. Um, oh, one more thing to notice about this player is the, the Norman Max plays at different speeds. I'll mess with that for you in a sec here too. Cool, so that note kind of matched the pad uh, that uh, I got pretty close with singing it. And you know, that's part of the neat thing about these pitch wheels is you can, you can actually fiddle with things and try to get them close. Uh, cool, so let me play back so you can see what that sounds like with this pedal. Cool, that's what it sounds like. Um, I uh, I was actually pretty happy with it once I got to that granular sound. Some of that handling noise felt a little bit like lowercase stuff. I don't usually do that too much. Um, so I thought I'd try to stretch out, got some good feedback about it, got some bad. Um, uh, I think it was probably too much noise, but you know, uh, whatever. 
try better next time. Cool. So just one more thing I'm going to run through. Um, someone out there asked uh, me to do um, uh, a little explanation of how I got the the more the lead progression on the OP1. It's nothing fancy, but I will definitely run through it because um, uh, I love helping people out. Okay, so uh, one last little short bit about how uh, I use the OP1 for the the actual improvised part. Um, this is, I believe, the cluster synth, and again, it was I just grabbed a preset and tweaked it a little bit. Uh, what I liked about this preset was how the notes start off sort of like small and chimey, and then if you hold them, they expand and swell into this very like kind of lush sounding, almost analog sounding synth. Um, so, you know, here was the melody. Ton of tail hanging around. Um, so I, uh, you know, if you run that through the hologram, and I'll I'll show the the settings I had for that. But this is uh, mosaic on uh, the second setting of mosaic. So I liked how they added that under um, note, that lower tone because um, I didn't have a whole lot of l lower notes in the stuff I was building up other than that note I was singing into the cassette loop. Um, but now here's what it sounds like when you hold a note for a long time and it starts to swell. And I think that has something to do with this green um, encoder here. Where was it? I think it was here. So that's it. That's that patch. And uh, that's what it sounded like through the hologram microcosm. And uh, yeah, uh, that's about it for that. Um, so um, hopefully you found this video useful and uh, you learned at least one thing. Um, and if you observe other things in my tracks or um, these little walkthroughs that you're curious about, I'm happy to make videos about them. It's pretty, it's pretty fun for me. I like teaching and uh, helping. So um, yeah, anyway, thanks for sticking around. And uh, if you're into my channel or the tracks, please support me in any way you can. Um, and I'll keep making more. Bye now.